Robin. Hi, Todd. I'm Cammy from Freedom Base in Virginia. So Carrie was such an amazing writer. What were her favorite books when she was growing up? Nietzsche. <laughs> she was the most sophisticated child on earth when it came to reading. I mean, literally as a teenager, she was, she was reading the most sophisticated philosophy books. Uh, she started though, is uh, when she was like 10 and 11, she would, would read voraciously over materials, but most of what she was reading back then uh, was uh, like, oh, I guess you could call it uh, like, you know, mystery novels and things, uh, mixed up files of Mrs. Bathwaller. And she had a, a bunch of um, not Nancy Drew kind of stuff yet, but as she became a teenager, she went into heavy philosophy and started, it was reading way beyond my interest. I remember going into her room sometimes and saying, you know, what are you reading? And she would say, oh, I'm reading the fall of the Roman empire. And I'd be like, why? Sounds like a school project. No, just for fun. Uh, so her, her reading choices were pretty intense. Uh, she, she had a lot of, uh, she likes a lot, a certain amount of poetry. Um, I would, you know, there was a, there was a couple of poets. Uh, let me think who is her favorite. Um, there was, um, besides the obvious ones like Thoreau and people like that, there was an obscure one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but if, as we're going along, if I think of it, I'll, I'll let you know. But I would just say this, that her, her des desire to read your standard material at a teenager level was way out there. I mean, it was, it was so far beyond my interest. It was a mind blowing. I have to interrupt. I thought of the guy's name. I, it's obscure. So that's why we were asking about her some of her favorite people. I mentioned some poets. There was a poet by the name of Ezra Pound that was a very obscure poet that she latched onto, uh, you know, back in her teenage years. And uh, I've seen those books floating around still to this day. So they, they maintained a place, you know, in her collection of books. She had a huge rotating collection of books in her house. A lot of people will have a library full of books and they'll leave books in place for long periods of time. It was not like that. Carrie would rotate through books. They'd end up in the garage. Uh, it'd be very rare that you'd see a set of books in her house. Another one of her favorite sets was she had a full set of Mark Twain's books. So these are all of his, his, his stories from Connecticut Yankee, Yankee and King Arthur's court to uh, you know, um, everything you can think of from Huckleberry Finn, you name it. Uh, it was a full set. I mean, about 30 volumes that stayed in the house. Uh, so interesting mixture of stuff from Mark Twain to Ezra Pound. But anyway, very interesting person in terms of her reading interests. Very, very broad. Uh, doesn't mean she loved everything, but she kind of read everything. Hi, Todd. This is Lindsay from Apollo Base in Ohio. Did you ever visit Carrie on the set of any of the Star Wars films? Hi, Todd. My name is Catherine from Terrapin Base in Washington, D.C. in Maryland. And my question for you is, have you ever been on set for a Star Wars movie? And if you have, what's your funniest memory from being on set with Carrie? Well, there's a, there's a, a pretty famous interview that Carrie did. And the answer is yes, I was on set uh, a couple of times. Not a lot, because it was not something that we really wanted to butt in on. Uh, she didn't mind me being around. She hated my mother being around in those days. So uh, the truth is I was sent to spy a couple of times because I, I wouldn't have had the resources to show up on my own, but she loved traveling with me. We traveled the world together. We had a blast traveling and uh, I was on the set a, a few different times. And the one story that I like to tell is that she's being questioned by somebody from the press and she's in her little princess outfit with the buns and they are saying, so, you know, Carrie, what are some of the great science fiction films that have influenced you? And she just goes, I mean, you just see her like, <laughs> because the truth is we weren't that into science fiction films. We knew some basic science fiction films, but if you watch that closely, cause it's actually an interview that was filmed, her eyes drift over to me and I'm going, 2001 without saying it, I'm trying to at least get her to say 2001 space odyssey. Um, we knew planet of the apes. We knew some basic stuff, but we were not like hardcore science fiction 
people. Um, I mean, George Lucas made that something to be. Prior to that, it was way esoteric. I mean, uh, you know, to, to like Fantastic Planet or, 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 or uh, War of the Worlds or something was a little more obscure. Uh, he made it mainstream and thus she made it mainstream. Hi, Todd. This is Carla from Rebel Legion Deveron Base in New Jersey. My question for you is, what is your favorite Star Wars movie to watch your sister Carrie play her iconic role as Princess Leia in? I am still a fan of the first Star Wars film. The buns and the white dress will forever be imprinted in my mind. Her, her naivete, you know, there's a freshness to it. There's, there's just this... I mean, I love the following ones too, but it's like that first thing will always be magical to me. The, and the buns will always be magical to me. And her attitude comes out so beautifully in that film. Uh, you know, it's the beginning of something that nobody understood was going to be magic. Um, earlier, you asked me about what was it like. I was also standing in front of Grommet's Chinese Theater in 1976, 77 with Carrie. And we were looking at people camped out on the street and we were in amazed because we had spent our life there as children going to the movies. We had never seen anybody camped out on the street like that. No, no, there was no response in our memory that had ever equaled that. So it was just as shocking to Carrie as it was to me that it was going to be as important of a film as it has become. And so there's something to be said for that. And there today in that courtyard, exactly where Carrie and I stood, right next to my mother's footprints and handprints is Carrie's plaque. It's the only tribute to a mother and daughter in the show business in the Grauman's Chinese courtyard. Hi. Hi, Todd. Tell us about a personality trait that you and your sister shared from day one. What have you and Carrie always had in common? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, when we were really little, you know, we, we would, I remember bathing, you know, we'd be, my mom would be bathing us in a, in a bathtub and we had the same hair color, the same eye color. There was a lot of physical attributes that were extremely similar. Uh, I mean, even our skin tone is very similar. Like Carrie later in life, like a lot of gals will change your hair color. But if you go back, she, you know, genetically we were really similar. And um, so as, as similar as we were in terms of our physical attributes, we were very different, as you might expect, between a, a boy and a girl in particular. And, and it's like, I don't remember ever thinking to myself, wow, we're so similar in this regard. You know, the one thing that I told you that we shared, you know, was our love of, of film. That was due to, I think, our mother more than anything else. Um, we loved to travel, even Carrie even more so than I. That was one of the things that we shared uh, is that we loved exploring and traveling and seeing new sites. And, and Carrie used to love to see the weirdest sites possible so she could say she was there. I mean, at one point she'd get in her mind that she had to see the Aurora Borealis, you know, and, and we went chasing that for quite some time, you know, because the weather wasn't conducive at the moment we wanted to go find it. So, you know, it's like, it's just whatever was in her mind. She loved to go find cities that had weird names, you know, like Intercourse, Pennsylvania or whatever, you know, just anything so travel was a, a very much something that we loved to do. We also loved music. When we were kids, we used to love to listen to music and play music. And Carrie played a little piano. I played a little guitar. Uh, we used to love to listen to my mother perform and my father perform uh, and sit in front of a big orchestra like that. That was magical in those days. You don't see it much today, but to sit in front of a huge orchestra and have your mother or father singing uh, is pretty magical. We shared that love of music. Uh, I, I, she loved to read more than I did. I was never as much into reading as she was. Um, we, we did like, uh, we loved the beach. Uh, my mom had a beach house and so we loved to swim and all of that. She used to try to ski, but Carrie was never super coordinated. So there was always a danger that Carrie was going to get hurt. We'd go bicycle riding together. She'd get hurt. I'd get blamed. My mother'd be like, how could you let her get hurt like that? I'm like, she just fell off the bike. I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, so there were, there were certain things like I was always more coordinated for sports and she never got into sports, but she put her powers into other things. So you could see how that balance was, but that was a, that's a pretty good overview of, of 
how we were similar or not. You know, intellectually, Carrie was probably the smartest person I've ever known in so many ways, uh, and yet lacked in common sense in certain areas, uh, especially when it had to do with uh, narcotics. So, you know, we all have our powers, and then we all have our kryptonite. And so Carrie had her kryptonite. Hi, Todd. I'm Jen, the commanding officer of Alderaan Base in New England. Carrie's wit was legendary and has been sorely missed. If you could get her reaction to one of the major events of the past few years, which would it be and why? So the world has been an amazing place in the last couple of years here, but obviously the last year has been something that I've never witnessed. And of course, she would have never have witnessed either. We grew up, we're a year and a half apart. We were very close growing up together. Uh, I was brought onto this earth to be a companion for my sister. That was what my mother did and said. And so I'm here, I was kind of here to keep her amused, but we went through a lot of the same things together. So I can assure you that nobody our age has ever witnessed anything quite like what's happened over the last couple of years. Um, one of the things that I think she would be happiest about if we could find some good news, I have a tendency to find the happiness in a lot of things. So Carrie, you like to uh, observe the dark side uh, at times, but I kind of lean towards the happiness side. I think she would have been thrilled when there were the early marches on Washington a couple of years ago, and they had the giant pictures of Carrie uh, and it said, you know, the face of the, she was the face of the rebellion. I think she would have been really happy about that uh, because it was, it was a truly a great honor at, at, from my perspective. And, and it was also, it wasn't about politics. It was for some people, obviously, but to me, I looked at it differently. I just looked at it like, wow, what an incredible place that we live in where you can march and express yourself, whatever your views are. And you would choose Carrie's face to lead the rebellion. Why? Because she says it how it is. And that was one thing about Carrie was she never edited. She never ever edited. She just told you what she thought. So today you would obviously hear a lot about Carrie and, and it might, a lot of people thought, Oh, she would be really on board with uh, the, the things that were happening. Uh, let's say with the Harvey Weinstein and all of that, that was the early things that were happening. The reality is, is that Carrie had already put Harvey Weinstein in his place years ago. Harvey had hit on Carrie many years ago and a friend of hers and Carrie sent him a giant dead fish wrapped in newspaper, you know, the Sicilian message from the Godfather, you know, and told him what to do. I won't explain it because it's the language is rather explicit, but you know, the truth is, is that Carrie was never a victim. She was always facing conflict head on. And uh, even in her great adversity, having mental illness and other things, she accomplished unbelievable things. So what she would say today is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We will go on and create great art. What's, what's the line Meryl Streep uses? You know, that, you're, that you turn your pain into art. So if this is painful for you, let's turn it into art. Whatever it is, let's always find the, the bright side of it and turn it all into art, whatever it is, because it can be funny or it can be sad, but we, at the very least, should turn it into some really good art. Hi, Todd. It's Ashley from the Blue Ridge base of the Carolinas. I was wondering, what was Carrie's favorite birthday cake flavor? So Carrie and I grew up with some pretty good cooks in the, in the kitchen. My mother was not the cook in the kitchen, but we had some high class cooks and the cook that was with us for better than 50 years was, was Mary Douglas. And Mary was from Louisiana and Mary didn't like wearing shoes. And my mother used to try to get her dressed up in your typical chef kind of clothing. And she refused. And Mary made the most amazing food, but she made also the most amazing desserts. So figuring out what Carrie's favorite dessert was, or favorite cake in this case was, is easy to do because we had the same lady making the same cakes literally for decades. So Carrie's number one birthday cake, favorite cake, was German chocolate cake. And it was a very multi-layered German chocolate cake with the coconut and all of that. That was absolutely, every birthday Carrie ever had, that cake was there. And even when she was doing birthday parties with Penny Marshall, 
that cake was there. There would also be some pies and other supplemental things, but the, it's an easy answer, German chocolate cake. 